What have I been up to this week? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Josh Hayes and welcome back to my second update video, vlog, newsletter, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it a vlog. Sounds better than a newsletter. If you are subscribed to the newsletter, however, you get this like a week early. So if you're interested in all that, subscribe, go to joshhayeswriter.com and click on the little uh, newsletter button and you'll be able to subscribe that way. I think I might be doing some giveaways here. Maybe next month I've got uh, some books, some CDs. We'll see. Just go subscribe. We'll figure something out. Speaking about books, and last week we talked about um, the Valiant series that I'm planning on doing, which is a follow-on to my Terra Nova uh, series that I wrote with Richard Fox. I just got the hardcover editions of the new branded covers. So before we didn't have the uh, Ember War branding on uh, the book. So here's the, the, it's out of order. Mine goes right there. Whatever. So we have uh, all four books and the new cover with new branding. So it's got the Ember War uh, cover right there. I, I have to say I, I'm, I'm conflicted because I think uh, Bloodlines is my favorite cover cover because that's how I envision the Valiant looking. Uh, so it'll be interesting when, when we start working on the Valiant covers if we can capture that type of ship in the cover. What have we been doing? I've got a list. All right, let's, uh, let's look at the list. What have we been doing? We finished the outline for Tranquility 2. I think that outline reached about 14,000 words. I'm doing a little uh, bit of a reread through uh, Devin's initial draft of the first couple of chapters. I think he wrote about 20,000 words in the first draft. And so I'm kind of going back and making sure that all of that lines up with the outline uh, and then lines up with stuff that we have planned uh, throughout the book. So I finished that outline as soon, hopefully this weekend, I'll be able to finish that read through. Uh, I'll polish up the outline just a little bit. I'll get that sent over to Devin uh, and he'll start drafting book two. Before we move on, I talked about my journaling last time. I decided to get a, a hardcover, a hardcover, <laughs> a paper calendar. I've been kind of documenting my week, like what I want to get done. Uh, instead of looking at the whole week and going, this is a lot of work that I need to get done. I've, I've kind of just divvied it up. Divvied. I'm a writer. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a talker. I'm a writer. Divvied it up over the course of the week. And this way I can look and see what I need to get done, what I can do on specific days. It helps me out a little bit. So uh, I'm trying that this year. As far as Gods of Fire, which is my military fantasy that I'm working on. Uh, I have the outline for that finished as well. I'm going back and tweaking some of it because there was some elements in the original story that I was trying to create mystery where it turned out there didn't need to be any mystery. Uh, it's, it's like one of those things where uh, you have instances in books where uh, some side characters know the big mystery, but they're not telling the main character and therefore they're not telling the reader what that is. And so it's keeping the reader in suspense, uh, which I think is a really cheap um, way to keep the reader in suspense. If the, main, if the side characters know it and the main character needs to know it, it's like they should they should just tell them. I mean, they, sh they should tell them. That's kind of a really cheap trick. And so basically what I discovered over the last couple of days of working on the outline is I don't need that, that particular mystery. We can have the information. The mystery kind of revolved around the geography of the world and what our characters know about the geography and the landmarks and where the enemy strongholds are and things like that. Um, and so basically I said, well, let's just Put it out there in the open. They know where the enemy supposedly is. They know about these other landmarks, but there are certain places that they can't see because of a, almost like a shroud of uh, powerful concentrated magical energy that the cameras can't see through and they can't fly into because it interferes with 
um, instruments and gauges. So I, I've solved all of that and now I'm going back kind of through the outline and taking that mystery out and then plugging in the things that I didn't have in there that would be helpful as the, like, like UAV surveillance and uh, choppers and that kind of thing. The other thing I did was I changed one of the characters in the book from being um, a troll to being a human, which sounds weird, but that kind of created some really cool lore. And I worked on this ancient, call him a warlock, um, that was kind of pivotal to the past of this world and, and contributed to the creation or the existence of these portals and whatnot. And uh, that created a whole bunch of lore and I had a really fun time last week kind of working through all of that. I think it's going to be really cool. The, the lore surrounding the world is really neat. And the way that the characters are going to progress through that, I think, is really interesting. Also this week, we, we started doing these uh, Keystroke Medium Minutes, which are kind of short snippets from our interviews. And after our episode with uh, Michael Rothman this last Monday, I went back and found... Uh, a little snippet of our conversation and clip that out and kind of edited it down so that we could put it on our different social media things platforms and uh, get some interaction that way and get some new viewers into the main show uh, and that was really fun uh, so we're going to keep doing that going forward if you don't know what Keystroke Medium is, it's my weekly um, show with Scott Moon and Chuck Manley uh, we do author interviews we do craft discussions we have what five different shows now uh honestly if you're following me and you're not following keystroke keystroke is a really good place for authors uh to hang out communicate and fellowship with other authors uh it's just a it's a really fun place to be keystroke medium on facebook and then our youtube channel speaking of keystroke we have coffee <sighs> keystroke medium.com slash coffee shameless plug shameless so on top of all my writing and other projects that I have going on, I've been uh, listening to a lot of audiobooks. Um, I just listened to The Gray Man by Mark Green Greenlee. Yeah, The Gray Man by Mark Greenlee. Really good, um, straightforward thriller. I mean, there well really wasn't any mystery to it. Right from the beginning, you know who the bad guy is. You know what the conflict is. Um, you know everything about the background of this conspiracy and um, why it's happening. You just don't know how the main character is going to solve it and get through it. And that's really interesting to me because the genre that I've written in, uh, predominantly mill sci-fi, a lot of the times you don't know what the, the underlying conspiracy is. And it's the how, but it's also the what and the why. Um, and with The Gray Man, you know all of the uh, what and the why, you just don't know the how. How is the main character gonna solve his problem? And there was also uh, a little bit of POV uh, things that they did, some really interesting kind of uh, cut characters. And what I, mean, what I mean by that is what I'm used to reading and writing is your POV characters are main characters in the book and you're gonna get multiple POVs from that character. There's a lot of characters that are created just for the necessity or just for the sake of, of suspense where they'll, they'll cut to a tertiary character to provide some suspense in a scene where they, like the author doesn't want you to know if, let, let's just say for an example, they don't want you to know that the main character has survived and they want that kind of uh, surprise so they they cut to a tertiary character with a tertiary character like may, maybe he threw a grenade and they exploded and they don't know whether it killed the main character or not and then out of the ashes here comes the main character and he, and he kicks some ass here and there uh, and there's a couple of instances like that in this book where they have like uh, basically his uh antithesis 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 I'm a writer, not a speaker. So they have this this kind of like alter ego assassin that they call the Korean, and he uh, he is hunting the main character. And we get a couple POV scenes from him, and even like during their fight, they switch between POVs between the main character and this Korean. And it's very interesting that in this genre that seems to be really prevalent. Prevalent, whereas in science fiction and mill sci-fi, where I write. Uh, it's not as prevalent, so I wonder if the two can be mixed 
kind of. So I might play with that a little bit in a, in a, in a book, maybe. But anyway, that's what I was reading uh, this week. Very good book, I think, The Gray Man. Next up on my audiobook list is Winds of War, which is the second book in the Furry Goddess Saga by Steve slash Jamie Castle and Rep Bruno. Uh, the first book was really good, and so now I'm moving on to the second one. I'm going to read that next. But I think that's pretty much all I had to update this week. Thank you all for subscribing and following me. Like I said, maybe in the next couple of weeks we'll do some kind of a giveaway, either uh, some books uh, or uh, some audio books. I've got some uh, audio CDs back there. I think they're technically MP3s, but they're hardcover. Maybe I'll do some signed editions if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but that's it. Thank you guys for coming and checking me out and, and being interested in what I have to say. I, I really like this format. You can follow my other social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm usually more active at. Until next time, happy reading.